Hello and welcome to this video all about papers or hexiform. What should I use for English paper piecing? Today I'm going to start by talking about paper and later in the video I'll move on to talking about hexiform. I'm often asked which papers do you use and do you leave them in? Can you remove them? When can you remove them? Because you glue based, doesn't that make it difficult to remove the papers? Can you reuse the papers? So hopefully this video is going to answer all of those questions. So when I'm choosing paper, I like to choose something that isn't too thick, isn't too thin. So I like thin card, which is about 120 GSM. And when you use papers, the beauty of it is that if you're careful when you remove them, you can use them over and over again, which makes them really cost effective. And they are relatively cheap to buy. I really like to buy pre-cut papers and I really like the ones made by a lovely company in the UK called Sew and Quilt. They are a lovely shop, they sell beautiful fabrics and their paper pieces are the ones I use almost all of the time. They cut them themselves and they are really fabulous, they have a great range with all sorts of shapes and sizes. Another company's papers that I've tried is Tales of Cloth and they are in Australia and that's what their papers look like. They are an eco paper, recycled paper, so they're really great. But often I do cut my own papers too. I'm going to show you two different ways that I cut my own papers. First off, of course you can print them out and cut them with scissors, but something that's really important for English paper piecing is accuracy and the accuracy of your paper shape will have a direct impact on the accuracy of your project. So I like to use a Sizzix machine which is a die cutting machine and you have to buy the dies for the particular size that you want. And this can be a bit of a drawback because it means you need to invest in all of the different size dies that you'll need. I just have two sizes of hexagons, one inch hexagons and one and a quarter inch hexagons. So to use the machine you need to layer it up with the plastic sheet at the bottom, the die facing upwards, your layers of paper or card on top of that and then a plastic sheet on top and it's very simple, you just turn the handle and it will roll straight through, cutting the hexagons perfectly. The only drawback with this machine, as well as the having to buy the different size dies, is that you do need to spend a bit of time cutting your paper to the exact right size. So you can see here I've got some wastage at the top, so normally I would trim down my paper to be the exact size and you can do quite a lot of layers at once, like six or seven layers. So the actual process of making the hexagons is quite quick if you invest that time into trimming your paper beforehand. And of course you can use any paper you like and you can recycle and reuse old paper, cereal packets, anything that you like. The other machine I have is a Cricut Maker and this machine cuts all sorts of different types of materials. The Sizzix also cuts fabric, but this machine can cut wood and all sorts of things depending on having the right blades for it. One drawback with this machine is you need to buy these sticky mats and they don't last forever. They stay sticky for quite a few projects, but eventually the stick goes and you can't make them sticky again very easily. And you also need a computer for this machine or a tablet like I'm using here, but this is much more customizable. It's a much more expensive machine, but you can create any shape and you can cut virtually any shape you want. If you've designed it on the computer, you can cut it and it's quite quick as well. So this is great if you are designing things and that's why I have this machine for designing my own patterns, as well as cutting things and making completely different projects that are nothing to do with EPP.
So I just wanted to share the two machines that I use. You definitely don't need machines like this, but as this hobby has grown into a full-blown passion for me, I've acquired these machines over the years, and it's nice to cut your own papers and to recycle paper from around the house. You can see the hexagon in my right hand has a slight ridge around it. That's the die cut one on the Sizzix machine. The other hexagon doesn't have a ridge, but this ridge doesn't affect how well it performs. They're both equally as good. It's just a small difference in the way they're cut, but both are brilliant. So when it comes to basting your shapes, I prefer to glue baste. I use the Soline glue pen, which is a fabric glue specifically designed for English paper piecing. It is blue when you put it on, but it dries clear. It washes out, you can refill the pen, and it is a low tack glue, which means that the papers can be removed really easily. I always begin by putting a dab of glue onto the surface of the shape and this holds it in the exact place where I want it to be, which is very useful if you are fussy cutting your shapes. Cut out your shape with a quarter inch seam allowance and then when you apply your glue to each side, make sure you don't do it right on the edge of the shape. Make sure you leave a little gap so it's about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. If you do this, it will make it much easier when you whip stitch your pieces together because the needle won't be going through the glue. So I wanted to share some of my thoughts about sewing with papers. Papers are stiff and it can make your hands ache after sewing with them for a long time. Well, that certainly does happen to me anyway. But they are brilliant for making sure your seams are really accurate and that your shapes are really accurate too. Take care not to catch the paper as you sew, but if you do, you can rip it off. It just means you might not be able to reuse your paper shape. Another thing that can happen is the dragging of the thread back and forth over the paper can cause your thread to snap. So if you're having breakage issues as you're doing EPP, that might be why. I love cotton thread, but that is the thread that is most likely to snap. So you might want to tr try a polyester or something like that. Or if you are using a really fine thread like this Aurifil 80 weight, really fine cotton, you might want to try using shorter lengths instead and that will help to reduce breakages. So when it comes to removing papers, this can take a substantial amount of time, but it isn't too tricky and it really does help if you've used your glue sparingly when you basted your shapes in the first place. I like to use an iron and some best press because that loosens the glue, the, the steam that that creates. And it also gives a really nice crisp edge if you're going to do applique with your pieces, which I'll show you in a moment. And if you're working on a really large quilt, for example, you can remove your pieces as you go along, so long as they've been sewn on all sides. So I'm getting out my row by row quilt, which was actually a block of the month by the shop Sew and Quilt that I mentioned earlier. And I have a lovely row here, all stitched together, ready to remove the papers and applique this onto a backing fabric. When I remove the papers of this piece, I need to make sure the seam allowances remain folded over, which is why I'm going to press it and use some best press to make those edges really crisp. But those central 
papers can be removed straight away because they've been sewn on all sides. So if you've got a large quilt, you can do that. But I do find that using an iron and using some best press, which creates a bit of steam, can really help to loosen the glue because the glue is water soluble and it washes out really easily. So doing this just loosens that glue and makes it so easy to remove the papers. Do put a tea towel down or some scrap fabric. Don't spray best press straight onto your lovely wool mat like I'm doing here. I don't know what I was thinking, I was just concentrating on making the video, but it hasn't damaged my mat, but I think over time if you were putting a lot of best press onto there, it might affect it or just not keep it as nice and clean and pristine. <laughs> So you can see that the papers come out relatively easily, just peel back that seam allowance and don't be afraid to give it a tug, it's not going to come undone. And the seam allowances around the edge just spring back into place because of that best press. And then you might want to just give it another press afterwards to keep everything really flat and in place ready for applique. So I hope that answered all of your questions about paper, if you have any more please leave them in the comments below. Now it's time to talk about Hexiform. Hexiform is designed to be left in your project so you don't have to spend time removing it. It's soft, easy to sew with, nice on your hands, it gives a lovely plump texture, it hides seam allowances when you're using fine fabrics. It must be quilted to hold it in place but it's quick to use, great for curved English paper piecing and brilliant for applique because it holds the seam allowances under and you don't need to press them or turn them. Because it's not removed, it's quick to use, you can embroider straight into it, it adds really nice soft structure. It's not reusable though and it does cost more money than paper, but if you do accidentally sew into it when you're whip stitching, it doesn't matter because it's not going to be removed from your project and you're sewing into fabric. And in some cases you might not need to use wadding so it depends on what you're making and your preference over that but I know people who are making large quilts from Hexiform and not using any wadding because it gives that layer in between so if you want to make a thin quilt that might be a really good option. Hexiform was designed and is made by a company called Ashmead Designs. It's their product, they make it, they sell it on their website. I sell it on my website too and there are a couple of other places that sell it but it isn't widely sold all over the world. It comes in packets of all sorts of shapes and sizes. They make all different types, hexagons, diamonds, all the sizes, you name it, they make it. And you can also buy sheets of it, which you can cut to any shape or size that you wish. And you can use them on the Cricut Maker and also in a Sizzix machine as well. So it's a really versatile fabric. When you baste your hexiform shapes, make sure you place the fuzzy side down, the other side is smooth and that faces up. So I like to dab a little bit of glue on the fuzzy side of the shape and then I place that face down on the wrong side of the fabric and then I just baste it as I would a paper shape. That's the only difference really, the fuzzy side and the smooth side. And the fuzzy side just gives a little bit of extra grip to hold the hexiform in place. Other than that, there's no difference between using paper and hexiform. You baste it in the same way and you sew them together in the same way. One thing I really love about hexiform though is that it's great for curved pieces because you're basting around that curved edge and that will hold your seam allowance under. You don't need to remove anything and disturb that seam allowance. So it gives you a really nice curved edge. And you can see here is my finished 
apex petal flower and it's been applied to this backing fabric and turned into a bag but you can see the curves are really nice it really holds the shape well sewing with it is really nice because it's fabric it's not stiff like paper it's got a lot of movement to it but it still holds the shape really well it adds a lovely squishy texture so it's really pleasant and comfortable to stitch with It's also fully washable, so this cushion that I made, which is a video tutorial on my channel, I've washed this in the washing machine and it came out exactly as it was when I put it in, but cleaner. <laughs> but it washed brilliantly and I didn't use any wadding or anything on this and it's really great, it gives a really nice feel to it and I'm really happy with this cushion and I'm definitely going to make many more cushions using Hexiform. I quilted it in place as you can see the diagonal lines and it all worked really really well. I used Liberty Tunnel Lawn for this project and if I'd used papers and removed the papers you would, especially on the lighter fabrics, you would see the seam allowances through the fabric because it is fine but because there's hexiform there that hides that and I really like the finish that it gives. If you've watched my channel you'll see that I like to embroider into my English paper piecing and when I do this I'm always using Hexiform and never stitch into the papers which is a question I get asked a lot but Hexiform allows me to do this and as you can see in this variety of pieces that I've made all with Hexiform it's something I use a lot and I really enjoy how you can just embroider straight into it it really gives a bit of structure to your piece you can make pouches and cases and it's great for applique as you can see here that it gives a little raised texture but it holds the seam allowances under really nicely it's really great for the tiny hexagons the quarter inch hexagons because you don't need to pick it out like you would with the paper, you can just leave it in, so I really like that. On this mini quilt I've used it to make the butterflies and the other applique pieces which I cut from the hexiform sheet to the exact shape I wanted, for example these mushrooms and the acorns and the leaves, and also this little house. I really love making little houses and I think the hexiform is really great for this, there's another little house that I made too. I embroidered this little house but because there's hexiform there there's no way you'll see any of the carrying of the stitches on the back at the front of the work so it's great for hiding your stitches too. So I use both paper and hexiform in my projects depending on what I'm making I tend to use hexiform for the smaller things and paper for the larger quilts but what do you think? Do you use papers? Do you use hexiform? Have you got any more questions? Let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.